Welcome to Louisiana Heartbeats. I'm Sudie Landry and I'm excited because we have a returning guest who's going to update us on what's been going on. And so I want to welcome to the show Dennis Ward, my friend, author, who's so willing to come in here and tell us what's going on and you've got a lot going on. First of all, thank summer. you. And since it's such a busy summer, I wanted to let Acadiana know that originally Dan had come in with his uh, first book, which was Mademoiselle, and it's about a special lady. And I'm going to let you, Dennis, tell you, Acadiana, who this lady is. But since the last interview, lots of things have transpired since. It's all good. And you're inching your way across Louisiana. <laughs> I love the way you said that. Welcome to the show, Dennis. I'm so glad Thank that you're you here. Thank you for having me. Well, let's just tell uh, Katiana, those, look, there he is. About time I got a picture of you up on the screen. <laughs> You'll be seeing the back and forth of two, uh, two poses, and this is Gigi. Who's Gigi? Okay. Um, Gigi was born in Paris, and she was a French Jew. She was um, born only child to an upper class family. Her father was an executive in an aircraft parts uh, manufacturer in Paris. So she lived a pretty nice life. Uh, penthouse, her father went to work with a chauffeured car. And when the war broke out, because the family was Jewish, they had to flee Paris ahead yes. of the German army. And for four years, they lived hidden in a garden shed in a walled house wow. in Villeurbanne, France. Wow, wow. And they almost starved to death. It's quite a story. Well, after the war, she met a Cajun soldier from Opelousas. Just by chance, <laughs> she was uh, walking her dog. Yes. And she heard French being spoken by an American in a uniform. And she was a real French lady. Yeah. Yes. Parisian. So they met, and they decided to go out dancing. She introduced her mother, who was with her, as her cousin, because she didn't want to think she had to, needed a chaperone. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, boy. There's a way. There's a will, right? So they courted in Paris and were married. And, um, well, the family, the father and mother, didn't really want their only child moving to another continent halfway across the world. And they objected to the marriage. And, um, but she went ahead anyway. And in 1946, she arrived in New York City on the SS Brazil with wow, 500 good. other war brides. Wow. There were so many war brides yeah, I'm learning that more. the French government chartered an ocean liner. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> were all the bows waiting on the other side? <laughs> well, that Gerald was supposed to be there waiting for her in New York, and that's how she started her life in America. He stood her up. So she and another war bride who was starting her life, new life in Texas they took the train together, and they thought maybe it would take a day. It took four days. Four days. Wow, wow. To travel from New York at the time to Louisiana. I'm going to ask you again to share with those who may have missed the first interview, why has uh, Gigi impressed you and put a special place in your heart? For well, her? I was privileged to know Gigi as a, a really good friend. Yeah. We, the last seven years of her life. She lived to be almost 80. And she died in 2008 of cancer. Okay. But um, she was very special. She had a spirit that was very unique. You captured that in the first uh, publication of the book, for sure. Very lively, likes to, very humorous side. Um, kind of a mischievous yeah, I can relate to her in so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> Very interested, always happy, always encouraging, making a difference, reaching out to anyone who needed comfort. That's what I got out of your first book. I and then we keep saying the first book of Katie Anna because he is updated 
uh, for different reasons, which you'll uh, ex discuss that in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. But I want you to continue because a lot of people may have missed that. Of course, I replayed it, so hopefully they didn't. But uh, Gigi had a purpose and she had a plan and she lived out her life the way that she wanted. I, I'm very happy about people who stick to what they believe. You know. I think her theme song would be uh, um, "Non Je re Regret Rien." All right, you're pulling that French on me. What's that I, mean? I I regret nothing in my life. Oh yeah, you're right. I have that no would be regrets. Perfect. No regrets. You she know, didn't. The good and the bad. It's all the same. At That's the, the right way to live. There really is. Uh, I personally, I'm not just saying that. I I truly believe that you just make the day the best that you can because it's true, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I love someone who, what is it said one time, somebody, whoever that was, stop looking in the rear view mirror. That's the past. Just look in that big focus. That's a much brighter future, you know. And I, that's brought me through, but every time I think, every time, well, as you know, I have misplaced my book, but I will <laughs> find it. But uh, Gigi uh, really inspired a whole lot of me that on some of the things that I'm involved in some other people wouldn't even touch. But they don't care. If you have a passion, which you do, and you have visions and you have dreams, you know, and you've got that drive, which she did and you do, then there's more to come. So I want Katie to know that why the change in, well, okay, we've got two books. This is the sequel. The first one was? Um, Mademoiselle Gigi, which in French means uh, an unmarried girl. Which is one of the pictures she you'll was, see back and forth. It was her life during her teen years uh, surviving the war. Okay. And at the end, it tips into the United States on that ocean liner. So that begins this book, okay. Madame Gigi, which in French is a married lady. Okay. She was the youngest war bride on that ship at 17. Wow. We need to do a story just on that. <laughs> wow. It was. It's quite Since interesting. First, I've heard war brides, but I didn't realize. If you had that in your first book, I missed it. I need to go back and read it again. When she came to Appaloosas, where her husband lived, uh, they had a Fet, a party on the town square with the band and a famous sheriff, Cat to say, he met her and gave her, and the mayor at the time, gave her uh, a bouquet of chameleons. Oh, wow. <laughs> Big time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the Cajun all the way. She, yeah, they, she was impressed with uh, <laughs> Louisiana. She liked the friendliness of the people, and she liked that everybody spoke French. But uh, her husband in Paris told her that he lived in a grand house on a lake, okay. which turned out to be a humble fish Yeah, camp. I remember that, yeah. And that he owned his own construction business, which turned out to be just kind of doing odd jobs. <laughs> Well, his description and what she expected turned out to totally. Yeah. But she married several times, didn't she? She married twice. She had five sons. That's what I thought, yes. yes. And uh, by the 1960s, she became owner of a club in downtown Lafayette. Yeah, let's talk about that club. Called Chez Giselle. And it was primarily for gay people, but... I think she welcomed. Yes, uh, that's what I understood. Everyone, Americans, Hispanics, everybody. everybody. Anybody who needed a place to go to to feel welcome, she opened that door. Yeah. Which says volumes, which a lot of that's needed. The all club the time. was so popular that um, the fire marshal threatened to close her down. And that's she, true. So she got a big, a larger club that accommodated 500 people across from the Mall of Acadiana on the Abbeville Highway. Wow, I'm familiar with that, yeah. That building uh, has since been torn down, but that was uh, where she expanded the shows, and um, she had that location for several years. She had a spirit in her. She didn't let anything stop her. She just moved on, and it got bigger and better each time. You know, as you're uh, saying that, I now know why that name was so familiar, but I didn't have anything in print to read about it. And Giselle, I couldn't say it 
the French and better not try again because <laughs> I'll end up messing it up. But uh, with uh, the, the new publication, the second publication, you've had different people come forward and kind of partner up with you. Let's give them a little do. Well, the first book I self-published and um, I was at the Louisiana Book Festival and uh, University of Louisiana Press um, approached me there That's good. and asked for a meeting and I was happy to meet with them. And they have a new fiction imprint called Sanssouci Books. Okay. And since they're a university uh, press, they were willing to take the self-published version and make a new edition, which I added another chapter. And it ha has a higher level of editing. And then we came out with the sequel, Madame Gigi. You know, Dennis, I mean, for being the president of the Writers Guild, my goal is always to push through any doors that may be open for other people to represent their works. And let me tell you what, from 10 years ago, actually, eight years ago, I've had the hardest time just getting locals to accept locals. Boy, it's kind of like go out of state, go out of, you know, out of town, you can do all kinds of stuff. But to actually get our local in Lafayette behind us, it supporting is. everything we're doing, that just must be the season. All of a sudden, since last year, <laughs> it's like all of a sudden we're being invited to places we never hid in rooms. We weren't able to have the big events. Now we're out in the public. We're out on the grounds. It takes time. We're getting called. The quality of You said it earlier, inching our way theater. across. Yeah. Yeah. The quality of literature and stage performance has improved. Let's talk about the stage performance because you're not only an author, you are a playwright. And you have a lot of local things that are actually being produced because you wrote, and you're also producing them, right? Or do you have someone else with you? Um, City Des Arts Theater produces my work for me, which is a great blessing. Really, would love to have someone come in here and talk about just them. Uh, yeah. So they'll let them know, let us know what they're doing. If you can do that another time, that'd be wonderful. I if not, get to somebody in here needs to talk about them. Because unless you know where they yeah. are, you don't know how to get to them. Cité des Arts is in downtown Lafayette, 109 Vine Street. But that theater produces more work. The Both talent it welcomes out there. It uh, has a lot of new companies. The productions are almost so, the, the plays are almost back to back, day to day. One closes the theaters. I am sincerely serious when I say we need to come back and do a show just on that because that needs more exposure. This is why OC is here uh, because I find out a day late, dollar short stuff that's going on that if I knew a schedule, if I knew information, then I can use it to help others. If I can't make it, I'll get somebody else to go. Would you be willing to come back and talk oh, about just sure. what's going on over there? Sure. It'd be just a show on that. I mean, basically, you're part of it, so you not only create, they're also producing. What I was fortunate, I, I wrote a new play this year in January. I turned off the TV, my cell phone, and I hunkered down for 10 hours a day and wrote a play in the month of January. And it was called Finding Nelson Mandela. That's it. And this play was special to me. It's been in my head for decades. I was living in Atlanta, and I came home one day from work, and Nelson Mandela was at the Georgia Tech Stadium speaking. So I joined the throngs and of people who saw him speak, and it imprinted on my brain for so many years that I had to write about it. So um, we did this play, and what is unique about an a theater that does original work is they have to do a thing called dramaturge. They take the plays and they get a group of actors together, and we have a reading. And this helps me tremendously. I hear the voice of these characters come to life, and I can get criticism from these actors and 
do rewrites. So we do three levels of that. That sounds like fun. It is. It's a blessing to you. It's informative, and they're networking together. Yay. A reading, it, drama. It's been fantastic. Critique group, live critique. Is it performing critique group? Yeah. Yay. That sounds good. And this play uh, was directed by Charlie Helfen. She's from this area, but she was in New York and New Jersey for quite a few years, attended Rutgers, has a, almost a master's degree in directing. See the and, talent that's over there that nobody knows is out there? We need to tell them about it. She had a vision for this play. She was really on board for it, so um, I was very lucky. Sounds like things are falling into place finally to promote your connecting with UL and, and all of that and, and the talent that's out there. I've been there when we had done a book fair when Baton Rouge couldn't do the book fair, Louisiana Book Festival, uh -huh. and they were in a bind and we took it upon ourselves and said, take the arts, it's hard for me to say that word, they opened up the doors for us to be able to have that oh, book sell that's great. for Baton Rouge. And lots of people come, came, but unfortunately, it's so small of an area, it's like you, God, please, you know, give them a bigger area, but they do lots of stuff. They do a lot. And people who them. really want to get involved with this and what they do, they one, need to know more about it. One thing that people tell me over and over is they like the smaller theater. They do. Too, because you sit right there almost on the stage and you almost feel like you're in the living room of the stage. You know, times are changing and it's about time to slow the world down and get back to the things like that real connection. No, what is it, all this technical stuff, flash and splash and dancing on television, a real story. And I had gone to what they call what a dinner club one time, where they act and they serve and they act. And I thought, wow. And then I went to a play for the first time in years, totally fell in love with it. But then I became a grandmother, great grandmother, and all of a sudden, <laughs> but now I am free. That's why I say I really want to get involved. I want to be able to, to have you come back, definitely share everything that's going on. That's another area that people need to know about what's happening oh, yeah. right here. Yeah. Literally in our backyard, you know. Lafayette is very lucky to have this theater of City Desire because they um, have a vision of supporting people who, not only for the theater, but they have dance classes. Yes, I know. They have acting classes, yes. improv. I took an acting class and was on stage acting for the first time with quite a, really? a long part in June. Well, that's, and do they have schedules and things that they send out? If you if you um, want it, you can get on their mailing list. It's on the web page, their website. Yeah. I know that. I need to yeah, check that out. Yeah, If I check out that, o then I'll probably get all the information I would be interested in. Well, we're definitely going to book you to come back on the show now. Back to your two books. In uh, the first time that you published the first book, what year was that? It was 2013. Okay. So four years later. Um, these two editions have come out and um, already what is exciting is I got an email from a lady in Atlanta who read the book and she said I couldn't put it down. That's when someone's going to give you, when someone's going to, I have to look up there and this lights in my eyes, sorry about that, five minutes, come on, let's talk a lot in five minutes. Um, when someone's going to reach out and tell you they cannot put the book down. That is the ultimate compliment. I know, that happened to me one time before and I can tell you, it was like, wow, they got the message. They got what I had the, there, you know? This book is uh, a woman's story. It's an immigrant's story. And it's also partially um, an LGBT story. Okay, well, it's about all what needs to be discussed. You were saying here it'll carry you through different emotions, oh, you yeah. know, and that's why I'm anxious to read this book because you've added some things in there that were not in the first book, so it's just got to be better. That's what it's all about. Uh, I love true stories. I believe in the true story. Life is true. No matter what kind of life, 
different people go through different things and they hurt in different ways. And just by sharing our stories, we can help other people. But we don't have to agree with each other, you know, and, and take out, you know, issues that just get in the way of being good. And I don't know, I, I have a problem with people judgmental, you know? And so Did I am. You know, survive. I know. I hate to say that, but I'm going to say it. She and I are a lot alike. I can see that I, she and I could have been best friends, really. Does she have that ability to make anyone she met uh, feel like they were her best friend? Well, they were. Because she, um, she, she loved from the heart, she cared from the heart. There's just she something. could have uh, taken a different road, sure. I guess. Been well, look at the class she come bitter. from all the way to that humble abode, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, talk about Gigi, okay. Um, okay, she was just a wonderful person. We know about all that and how she's opened up the doors for the different people that needed a haven to go to. Was she herself in any way? What kind of profession other than that? Did she ever work in a particular field or did she ever write anything or did she do well, you know, she was, she was trained as an artist in France. No, I forgot about that. During the war at l'Académie de Beaux-Arts, which is a very prestigious art school. And in this book, you will read that she did murals, she did portraits. Oh, see, that's the part that's going to be interesting. Um, uh, Dickie Bro bought a painting that she did of the praying hands, mm. and it, it's a, a peasant's hands in prayer. And I can see that. I can visualize that. That, that painting says is, volumes, huh? Oh my gosh, it's stunning. Just, yeah. just, just the whole. You can see the emotions in those hands. I can, I can visualize that. I was going to bring up something too in this uh, adventure. Of I can see, eventually inching across Louisiana and the world, like you said, I can see this becoming a movie. We need to we need to just keep on telling people more about I, what's going on. I think it's going to happen. I mean, maybe not even in my lifetime. I hope so. But, well, I hope so. I sure would like to see people but, get their due while they're alive. But hey. Somebody's got to do it, uh, even if we're not here, huh? It's such an incredible story. It really is, and I'm not just saying that, but uh, Katie and I really have read this book, the first book, and it really touched me in so many ways, and it's also educational, it's so informative. I mean, now I learned I forgot something or the war bride thing. I want to go back and read again and all of that. But uh, you are locally living here in Lafayette at this time, right? I live in Opelousas. Opelousas. Well, let's give Opelousas oh. a good uh, do out there. <laughs> I want to be sure that uh, people know that you are a local yes. and that you're involved in a lot of li local things going on and that hopefully we're going to be able to share more about you being involved in the Cité de Arts uh, event. That can open so many doors just letting people know where it's at, what is going on. Meanwhile, they'll know who you are and what you're going on. So. I would like to say that, you know, I want to let people know, Katiana, that we, City is my name, and I'm also the president of the Writers Guild, and I also create free events where authors can come out and they can sell their books and autograph, and I just now got blessed that Dennis signed on with one of the <laughs> events, and I've got two more to tell you about in the future, but the whole point is get out there. And if we tell you through the media airways what's going on, then you know where you can go check out these people. So if we tell you the story inside of the story, then hey, I've done my part. Dennis is doing his part. So I can see that the rolling credits are already also okay. already coming down. Is there anything you'd like to say before we close out? I, I would just ask the Lafayette community to support local authors, playwrights, uh, singers. We, we really work hard. We have to work doubly hard to make ourselves known and get a great product out to you. And there is plenty of it here. There is plenty. Tips. So please support your local. Well, I'm on the same page as Dennis, because I can tell you that not only is he a seasoned author, he's also involved, he's a playwright, but he's a local, supporting local, and that's my heart. So, if you know someone, you, you know anybody can write, 
but it's the marketing. Tell somebody about Dennis. Look, look at this good picture on the screen. He is a local, and we'll be doing more shows in the future to give you more information regarding where you can find I mean, out. Thank you so much for watching, and this has been Louisiana Heartbeats. Thank you, Sadie. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. That was wonderful. We're not finished, you know. We're going to be doing more.